A secure, comfortable retirement is every worker's dream. And now because we're living longer, healthier lives, we can expect to spend more time in retirement than our parents and grandparents did. Achieving the dream of a secure, comfortable retirement is much easier when you plan your finances. Start planning by visiting Social Security's Retirement Planner page at www.socialsecurity.gov slash planners slash retire. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the Social Security Hotline here on CAN TV. This is a live broadcast and we welcome your calls. The number is on the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060. I am excited to have in the studio with me today, um, DJ Cummings. And we'd like for Ms. Cummings to introduce herself to our audience. Hello to everyone out there in TV land. Uh, I am a local representative for the Social Security Administration. I work at one of the offices in Chicago. And we're here today to take your calls and questions about retirement or any other Social Security business you may have questions about. Yes, thank you, DJ, for that uh, introduction. Um, and my name, and co uh, of course I didn't introduce myself, but my name is Dolly Robinson. And it just so happens that DJ and I work in the same office on the south side of Chicago. In our um, opening announcement, we mentioned our Social Security Retirement Planner page at www.ssa.gov slash planner slash retire. Can you just briefly, uh, DJ, talk to us uh, about what a person might find on this website? This is a pretty exciting website. We invite all of our listeners to uh, take a look at it. Oh, absolutely, Ms. Dolly. Um, there are many options that are available. A person can actually estimate how much they will receive for their retirement uh, estimator by using the uh, tab that's called Retirement Estimator. You can go in there and see what it would uh, estimate as far as your retirement for now or in the future should you decide to wait. A person can also use the benefits calculator uh, to test their different retirement ages or future earnings amount. There's also an option on the website that will allow a person to navigate directly into the online retirement application. Even if this person is not anywhere near retirement age, you can go online www.ssa.gov and check retirement estimator and have all these things pop up as long as you give it the right information. We do have a caller. Yes, uh, go ahead caller with your question. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm 64 years old and I've worked at various printing companies that took out for pension pay. Uh, the companies don't realize that I'm retired now. How do I notify them about, about my retirement? When I'm 65, or will they be notified automatically? Okay, um, that's a good question. Uh, you re you're just receiving a, a retirement from your company at this particular time? Yes. Okay, so if if you want to file for your social security retirement later on down the line right yes okay so um you would um you could file as early as age 62 that's the earliest you can file for social security is that okay. say age 62 and um you need to just check with your company because i'm not sure what their stipulations are about reporting Social Security uh, benefits to them. I know if you're getting a federal, state, or local pension, you have to report that to Social Security. Okay. Okay? Yes, thank you very much. All right, and thank day. you for calling in. Okay, that was a, a good question. 54, retired already. Yeah, yeah, that's a really <laughs> that's good the Amer that, that's, that's the American dream, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's the American dream, retired 54. Okay, so as we uh, think about this, uh, 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 our normal people, normal mm -hmm. people retiring, uh, 
Regular uh, retirement yeah, age. Yeah, regular <laughs> retirement. <laughs> right. Uh, they, would, they should go to our website, www.socialsecurity.gov and uh, slash planner slash retire. There are a lot of, there is also a question and answer um, segment there that they can click on and maybe some of the answers that we don't have on the air today, maybe they can find those answers there on the, uh, on the website. Um, that was some helpful information you gave us. But the thing is, everyone has access to our website. If you have a computer, if you have access to a computer, everyone has access to that information. Now, while we're talking about retirement, we want to shift gears a little bit. Uh, we have many visitors that come into our office thinking that age 65 is full retirement age. Ah, uh, yes. And um, we want to give them some general information about what is really full retirement age these days. Yeah, the, the most important thing is that full retirement age refers to the age when a person can actually retire and get their full benefits without any reductions, um, even if they're still working full or part time. Uh, in other words, you don't need to actually retire from your job in order to claim your retirement benefits. Also note that when waiting until age 70, if you can, now some people may not be able to, but no, if you can wait, too many. yeah, you will actually get a higher monthly benefit. Um, you will also need to, um, you know, just to remind you guys that the, the current retirement age um, has been increased. There was a law that was passed by Congress in 1983 and the retirement age is no longer age 65 for people that were born in 1938 or later. Um, it's actually age 67. Let me, let me repeat that. The people that were born um, after 1959, their retirement age is actually 67. Um, that's their full retirement age. Now, the best thing for you to do, of course, is to go right to the website. Um, www.socialsecurity.gov slash planner slash retire slash retire chart dot html slash again and then look for your actual year that you were born mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to plug in and see what your actual retirement age is but again if you were born after 1959 your retirement age your full retirement age is 67 67 years old <laughs> full, full retirement age and full retirement age is no longer 65 that's the uh, point that we really really want to stress because some people are under the impression or under the assumption that 65 is full retirement age but we do have uh, Medicare that's available to a person at age 65 absolutely right? that that hadn't has not changed so far Yes, yeah, so at 65, a person can still come in or go online, socialsecurity.gov, and file for Medicare, even if you're still working and have, um, in, uh, have insurance through your job. If you're paying into the Social Security system, which most jobs are, then they should be filing for their Medicare Part A at the least. Right. That's the hospital portion of Medicare. And then they can make a decision when they talk to someone whether or not they want to be enrolled in Part B, which there is a cost for Part B. Um, and that cost, I think, this year is $134. It is. And upwards, depending on your income bracket. So at 65, is not full retirement age, but you should file for Medicare, especially since it's free. When you get something free from the government, I mean, you know. <laughs> You, you should be go right you should, away. You should <laughs> go right away and get that free uh, hospitalization insurance. Okay, so uh, what else um, uh, do you think our audience should know about retirement benefits? Um, the other thing I did want to add about the Medicare application mm -hmm. online at SSA.gov is that that is one of our easiest uh, applications for you to fill out online. Uh, it's one of the shortest, um, one of the most simple applications that we do have available. So going to socialsecurity.gov will allow you to do your um, Medicare application online. Um, and, and just before you get to that uh, uh -huh. question we just asked, I want to let our audience know that even though 
we are stressing that you um, file online and go online and do your business, which keeps you out of the office, keep you from having to wait. You can also make an appointment to go into your local office by calling 1-800-772-1213, um, and that number is open uh, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, or you can use our telephone automated services. Uh, so you still can do business face-to-face -face in the local office, but we are stressing that you uh, try to use our automated services because you can do that from the comfort of your own home and you don't have to come and wait in the office. Okay. Exactly. Um, and just to remind you guys, we are waiting for people to call in. The number is 312-738-1060. Again, that's 312-738-1060. One zero six zero, and we're here to take your calls today. Now, the other thing I think we wanted to talk about is the retirement uh, benefits. That you, we actually have an early retirement age. The early retirement age is sixty-two. Um, of course, you can wait as late as age seventy. The longer you wait, the higher your monthly benefit will be. But your monthly benefits will be permanently reduced if you start them at any time before your full retirement age. For example, if you started receiving benefits this year in 2017 and you're age 62 this year, your monthly benefit amount will be reduced by about 26%. On the other hand, if you wait to start actually receiving those benefits until after your full retirement age, then your monthly benefits will be permanently increased. The amount of this increase is two-thirds of 1% for every single month that you wait, or about 8% a year. That, that you can actually delay them all the way up until the age of 70. What I always remind everyone when they're coming into the office to file for their retirement benefits that at that point you're locking in your, your number. So if you're getting um, $1,000 a month for your retirement, you'll be getting $1,000 a month as long as you're here to receive your retirement. So just be mindful and then go back to your retirement estimator, which you do have available online, and check and see if you waited a couple more months, a couple more years, how much that would actually increase your benefit amount. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a very good point because uh, some people, they can't wait. We right. understand that right. some may not be working or whatever, mm -hmm. and they can't wait. They choose not to wait. But... Um, what happens is every month, like you said, every month that you wait, you get more money. Absolutely. And up to age 70, mm -hmm. um, there's no more money, so it, it's not profitable for a person to wait beyond 70 to come in and file for Social Security, even if they're still working. We have many people right. coming into our office and they're 71 years old and right. over, still working, yeah. and they just put Social Security on the back shelf. Mm -hmm. But those are checks that, that are yeah. available to them and their families. Right. And so when you reach these ages, you need to be making those decisions as to whether or not you should come in and file or file online. Okay, so now um, we talked about the age 62, uh, many people do come in at 62, and, and, and we want to think about if your full retirement age is 65, or no, no more 65. 67. 67, <laughs> or if it's 66, even uh -huh. if you're full 66. retirement 66, mm -hmm. then you, that's four years. You have to take in account, uh, even if you're getting a reduced benefit, you're receiving checks for four years. Absolutely. That's 48 payments mm -hmm. versus maybe waiting four years to get maybe $300 more. Absolutely. So you, you need to weigh all of those factors when you are um, thinking about retirement and thinking about um, coming in to file for Social Security or even just being educated as to what your decisions could uh, be and how they would have an effect on your, yourself and your family. Absolutely. Um, I think what's really great about the uh, retirement estimator that's available online oh, yeah. too is that the, it prints out an actual chart. So it tells you at this age, this is what you would get. At this age, this is what you would get. 
Um, so you're able to actually see it in black and white and help you make a better decision, um, of course, based on your own income, based on your own health, based on your own needs. So going to that retirement estimator before you come in or before you make your appointment or before you file online can be very useful in you making the best decision for you. Yes, that's that's absolutely that's absolutely right. That mm -hmm. estimator, and and the thing about the estimator is that you don't have to give us a lot of information. Yeah. It's kind of generic. You just mm -hmm. put numbers in, mm -hmm. so it's not like you're putting your social security number out there, all of your personal information. You're just putting in generic information to get a get a number, get some numbers, and so it's very very safe to uh, go on online for that. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, that was all good information um, for viewers to think about as they approach retirement age or if they're already retirement age. And I um, want to add to that uh, this is for all of our viewers out there who are receiving that um, government pension, mm -hmm. uh, your postal pension, uh, your uh, city pension. Uh, Chicago Public School Pension, right. uh, your benefits if you're uh, insured for Social Security, those benefits will be reduced uh, by a significant amount um, when you start receiving that pension. So some of those people, we found that those, some of those people actually keep on working a while so that they can get their Social Security and work. Okay. And, and not uh, uh, get their pension. As long as they don't get their pension, they'll be able to get that Social Security. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, go ahead. Yes, uh, good evening, ladies. Good evening. I have a somewhat unusual question. Can you speak up a little bit? I'm sorry. Uh, I said, good evening, ladies. I have a somewhat unusual question for you. If someone uh, uh, who had already reached retirement age and was receiving their benefit got married later in life, you know, never been married before, would that, um, would that, and something happened to them, would their spouse be able to collect on their benefit? I, I, I've heard different answers from people on this. Some people say, well, they would have to be married for 10 years before the spouse could collect. But again, this is for, uh, if, if someone were to get married after they were already collecting it, and maybe you two ladies, maybe one of you knows the answer on that. Oh, okay. Thank you for that uh, question. Um, there, okay, normally uh, the rule is 10 years, but if you are married, there are some uh, special rules. Uh, we don't have our hands on them here in the studio, but there are some special rules uh, for individuals who get married and say you got married and uh, the spouse died like within six months, nine months, a year, mm -hmm. uh, that they did not have the opportunity to be married for 10 years. And so you would be able to come into the office and file a claim. Um, it, at any rate, um, the spouse should come in and file um, what is called the lump sum death payment. And the lump sum death payment, once you file for that, then that individual um, uh, would be told what other benefits they have available if they were ent entitled to benefits under the number holder's number or the deceased person's number. I hope that helped you. Yeah, I think that was excellent. Um, we just want to keep in mind, too, um, just like Ms. Dolly said, that um, there's always a lot of... Um, you know, things that you may hear from your family members exactly. and friends, but mm. you want to come into the office and speak with a representative. Uh, you want to go directly to the website, ssa.gov, and get those questions answered by w one of us. Um, because what happens is a lot of times, you know, those things may not apply. Just as Ms. Dolly said, there's a special situation if you, um, that person passed away you know, while they're receiving the retirement benefits. But in order to see what works for you and how you're going to be entitled, we would ask you to come in or make an online application with us right away. You know, don't wait. Don't wait a year. You know, try to get in within, I would say, within a 30-day period or sooner. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so yeah, that that out there in the neighborhood, there there's a lot of information. <laughs> a lot of information. A lot of information that's not around. correct. <laughs> and so, uh, like DJ said, we 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 urge people to really ask the right. experts, the people who do this work, right. uh, and get the right answers so that when something happens, you are prepared. We got one last thing we want to talk about re uh, regarding retirement before our time is up. Uh, what about people who uh, are not full retirement age and they want to keep on working? This is very important. Right. Um, the people that are um, not full retirement age, if a person decides to receive benefits before they hit their full retirement age, they also should understand how continuing to work can actually affect your benefits. We may withhold or reduce your benefits if your annual earnings exceed $16,920, and that is for this year. However, every month that we actually withhold or reduce your benefit amount, this actually increases your future benefits. So there's still some um, a good way to, to kind of increase your future benefits while receiving your retirement check. Um, that's because at your full retirement age, we will recalculate your actual benefit amount um, to give you credit for the months in which we reduce the benefits. Um, due to you, um, your earnings or your working paycheck stubs at that time. In effect, it's if you didn't file for those few months. Um, you can actually, again, go right to the website to learn more about this situation to see uh, if it affects you and how it would affect you. It's www.socialsecurity.gov slash planners slash retiring, retire while working Dot HTML. Let me read that again. It's www.socialsecurity.gov slash planners slash retire slash while working dot HTML. Yes, that's a very good website uh, for people not only receiving retirement benefits, for, but for people who are receiving disability. That uh, helps helps uh, you to get the understanding of how work affects your benefits. And if work does affect your benefits. But now, even if you earn more, than this $16,920. That doesn't mean that you won't get any checks or that your checks won't stop unless you are way over that amount. Because in effect, if you uh, go over this amount, we take back uh, one for every two, two. $2 right. that you make over that amount. Mm -hmm. So if you make $2,000 over that amount, we'll take $1,000 worth of benefits away. Right. And that could possibly be one or two checks. We don't take away half a checks, mm -hmm. so it's a whole check. So <laughs> if your benefits are eight hundred dollars and yours a thousand, we will withhold two checks, not one and a half checks. Yeah. And so those checks on the back end, when you reach full retirement age, then uh, you will get some of that money back. Also, while you're working um, and file your taxes you get what is called an adjustment at the end of the year, usually around in October. Mm -hmm. You get a little lump sum on, on your check uh, toward the end of the year, and we have people that do that all the time. And I think that is uh, going to just about wrap up the time that we have to receive phone calls on the air. But let us just remind you that our phone lines are still open at 1-800-772-1213 at and our phone lines will be open until 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. You also can use our automated services and they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And of course you can visit our website at www.socialsecurity.gov. Well, DJ, it looks like we are running out of time. Our clock is ticking down, and we won't be able to take any more phone calls, as we have said. But uh, Social Security is accessible all the time on our website and through our 800 number until 7 o'clock. Thank you for all the information that you have given us today on retirement. We want to thank Ros Rocio for screening our calls. And we want to thank all our viewers for turn, tuning in to this edition of the Social Security Hotline on CAN TV. Even though many of you didn't call, we're sure that many of you are out there watching and getting the information. And so please stay tuned again next week 
for another edition of the Social Security Hotline here on Hot, uh, CAN TV. On behalf of myself, Dolly Robinson, DJ Cummings, my guest, and Rosario, uh, we wish you a pleasant evening and a safe one at that. Have a great day.